previously on the Dragon Ball Prediction. And before, and before we get, we get to, to part, part five, five, let's, let's talk, talk about the ones from the Universe Survival Saga and explain how they will transfer their energy to the Universal Spirit Bomb to help Goku defeat Omega Shinron. All right, everyone. Next time on Dragon Ball GT, we will finally talk about Omega Shenron. We apologize that we have one more part left to talk about. Don't forget to subscribe! And then it continues! Also, before we start, when we were speaking about Zircon, he was voiced by Neosi, but due to what I have explained about him in part 2 about his sexual harassment, he will be voiced by Zach Aguilar. <laughs> <gasps> That's right, DK. Let's hope Zack will do great. Also, Botama was inspired by Winnie the Pooh, voiced by Jim Cummings, and SpongeBob, voiced by Tom Kenny. Speaking of Jim Cummings, he responded to Natalie on his Instagram post. Thank you so much, Mr. Cummings, for the response. We highly appreciate it. Oh, much Don't mistake Botamo for those two and get confused, by the way. Also, on the Allies video, we forgot Broly. He is voiced by Johnny Artemis Yambach. Prior to Broly being revealed as the legendary Super Saiyan and in part because of Paragus restraining Broly's power to his base form via his cramp, Paragus confirms that Broly's power level, level is weaker than his own, with Future Trunks confirming this earlier, citing the latter as being a toothpick by comparison. And she lied. She is voiced by Erica Lindbeck. While not shown physically fighting throughout the movie, Chi Lai relies on more her wits and trusty ray gun to deal with matters. The former case was her removing the remote control device from Paragus' rock pocket without him noticing, while the latter case stealing the Dragon Balls and forcing Kikono at point, gunpoint to ask to use the wishes. They will, like last time, lend their energy to to Goku with the Universal Spirit Bomb to help them defeat Omega Shenron. With that out of the way, let's... Start up! Team Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. My name is Natalie the Life Light, and these are my partners, Pikachu and Carla. Pikachu! Good day everyone. And this is episode 5 of the Dragon Ball Classic and GT Marathon. My name is Carla, and this is my partner Wendy, and her newest best friend, Amu Hinamori. Hi everyone! It's a pleasure! In this video, we will talk about the Shadow Dragons from the second Star Ball to the seventh. Omega Shenron will be talked about in a separate video, but we will go over his first form, Sin Shenron. And also before we start, Elise Bowman who is the voice of Pan from Dragon Ball GT, spoke to Gabe about the voiceover actors have to remain neutral with Funimation, so feedback to them and Toei is necessary and may be possibly taken into consideration because Double X has to comply with them or the contract with Sony is terminated. Thank you so much, Elise. We will do our best for DB Classic in GT. First, we have Sin Shenron. He is voiced by Bob Carter. Sin Shenron is created by the wish that revives all of those killed by Frieza and his men on the mech. Therefore, just as Hayes is one of the weakest, Sin is the strongest. His brutal, unrelenting, evil nature could be the result of the amount of negative energy used to create him, or as a result of the selflessness of the wish's intentions. By reviving the Namekians, the heroes intended to use Poranga to transport everyone except Frieza away from the dying planet of Namek, leaving the tyrant to perish in the explosion. Next is Hayes Shenron. He is voiced by Brad Jackson. Hayes Shenron is the most comical of the Shadow Dragons and is correspondingly created by the Wish that takes place in the early half of Dragon Ball, a very comical manga or anime in and of itself. And the wish that creates him revives only one person, Bora. And so the wish she uses relatively little power, leading Hayes to be one of the weakest of the Shadow Dragons. And his power over pollution and toxic city may be viewed as a negative contrast to Bora, becoming a guardian of the sacred land of Korin. Next is Ice Shenron. He is voiced by Jerry Jewell. 
Ice Shenron is among the dirtiest of all of the Shadow Dragons, even so more than Sin Shenron. In the anime, he is created by the wish that revive those killed by King Piccolo and his minions. Other sources state that he was created by a wish is that is made so that, of all people, Majin Buu, a creature responsible for the deaths of billions and the destruction of countless planets, could have a second chance by making everyone but the Z Fighters forget his evil deeds, arguably making it the most selfless wish made. Next is Nuova Shenron. He is voiced by John Bergmaier. Nuova Shenron is created by King Piccolo's wish for eternal youth, which is undeniably selfish and as such is the noblest and honorable of the Shadow of Dragons. Nuova is also notable for being the fastest among the dragons. His speed is enough to completely outclass that of a Super Saiyan 4 and can even catch Omega Shenron by surprise. He is very serious as the King Piccolo saga is a very dark and serious time in the Dragon Ball manga and anime. His power to control fire and heat could be seen as a symbolic of Piccolo's origins as Demon King. Demons normally dwell in the home for infinite losers, but it's usually a place with, filled with fire. And siding with Goku also resembles King Piccolo's son or reincarnation, Piccolo, who started out as a villain created by the actions of King Piccolo to later join forces with him. And interestingly, Nuova Shenron shares traits with Goku as they both come from dark backgrounds, though later choose to fight against their own evil kin which is likely a reference to their association with the four-star Dragon Ball. Next is Raid Shenron. He is voiced by Chris Mr. Popo Kaysen. Raid Shenron is individually frail, but has some of the deadliest elemental powers of any Shadow Dragon and is created by the wish that revives Goku after he sacrifices himself to kill Raditz. Raid Shenron's powers of elasticity is strong enough to withstand Goku's 10 times Kamehameha even though his offensive power is not even enough to hurt Super Saiyan 4 Goku at all. Rage is relatively dark compared to Haze or Oceanus, but is created in Dragon Ball Z, which is considered a much darker anime and manga than Dragon Ball. Since he was created by a wish in the Vegeta Saga, his powers are symbolic of the Saiyans. His elasticity is symbolic of the highly expandable Saiyan armor. His individual fra fra Frailty is symbolic of Raditz's relative weakness compared to his comrades. Next, we have Oceanus Shenron. She will be voiced by Alexis Tipton, and her male monster form will be voiced by a different actor. Oceanus Shenron is the second most comical dragon and is created in a time when the series is still very comical. She is both good and bad and is created with a wish neither completely good nor completely evil. Oolong wished for a hot girl's panties, or the most comfortable underwear in the world in the dub version, which may also explain why Oceanus has a female appearance. However, as Oolong made a selfish wish with good intentions, wasting the dragon's powers before Pilaf could wish for world domination, Oceanus is likewise an evil dragon beneath the benevolent facade, both figuratively and literally. As she also hides her hideous true form behind her elegant water spirit persona. Her shape-shifting is also a trait she shares with her creator, Oolong, who is incidentally known to have transformed into a handsome man when he is first introduced, as well as shape-shifting into the attractive female Bulma. And finally, we have Natron Shenron. He is voiced by Christopher Bevins. Natron Shenron is the darkest of the four dragons and is created in a very dark time in Dragon Ball Z. He uses very evil tactics such as using Pan as a shield, which corresponds to the selfless wish to revive Majin Vegeta's victims in the Majin Buu saga. Incidentally, Nichiron is very weak until he absorbs a body, at which point his power rises ex exponentially. This parallels Majin Vegeta's controller, Babidi, who was likewise a relatively frail schemer who relied on others who, to defend him. His desire to burrow underground like a mole could be seen as symbolic of Babidi's strategic, ch strategic choice to bury his spaceship underground so Shin and Kibito could not find it. Additionally, he shares his power of absorption with Majin Buu who was revived as a result of Majin Vegeta's desire to fight Goku. Now that we've gone through all the Shadow Dragons, we'll be able to move on to Omega Shenron! <laughs> 
So everyone, what do you think? It will be included in the Funimation exclusive Blu-ray remastered and be sure to super smash that like button and comment below on your honest opinion. And remember, no trolls allowed. And before this video wraps up, let's get this video to 50 likes, and it's a great way of helping out this channel since YouTube's ad system is broken as hell. Be sure to follow Nat on Instagram, which is Pikachu and Sonic 222 and her DeviantArt, which is the same as her YouTube username, Pikachu and Sonic. Anyway, everyone, be sure to share it with your friends and subscribe for more content. And thank you guys and girls for watching us, and we'll see you all on the flip side. Bye! <laughs> Team Smash Productions! Thank <laughs> you.